in the first few minutes it is going to be loud Dan Bigger gets ready to get us underway the road to redemption for one of these sides the road to perdition for the other France have it from that kick off and uh, an early wandering from Wesley Fofana but uh, oh, good start for Wales they will have the, the line out just inside the French 22 Jonathan Davis, welcome. Yes, great atmosphere here. Perfect conditions for rugby. Good start is needed. Great. Oof. Nearly through there was Michelac, but uh, it'll knock on from Wales, a scrum to France. Yeah, I'm not sure which was the first uh, knock on there. I'm not sure if Michelac got a hand in there. But after Jamie Robson had knocked it on, I feel. Big scrum. Have a look at the two hookers if you get a chance. Remarkable here uh, going on from Zorzeski and you're Hibbard. You're only jealous, Andrew. <laughs> no, I'm not. Big scrum just outside the 22. Pretty solid from Wales, but a penalty to France. The decision from George Clancy. Ooh. Look at the pitch cutting up. Oh, that has cut up, hasn't it? We saw the Millennium Stadium it yeah. cuts, cuts up quite often, but that is <laughs> vicious. <laughs> I understand there's a lot of water. The pitch was covered last night uh, with a plastic covering on it, but there's a lot of water lying on the covering, yeah. so maybe a bit soft down there. Well, look at that. There's a lot of flooding in Paris last night. caused chaos in the traffic. Now, here you go. Last uh, week, Francie's line-out was pretty poor. That one works well enough, going to going to Suta in the middle. And that's good as well. If they can uh, have it was the front of the line now, that's not a great attacking option for the French back. So they'll be happy if they keep going to the front of the French line now. Good roll on by the forwards though. And in goes Mashro looking for a penalty this time to Wales. Cries of yes from the Welsh players holding on to the ball in the tackle. Yeah, I think holding on to the ball on the floor and again no Dan Bigger put us in an attacking position. A few for this pitch by the end of the match. Look at the damage already done. Yes. Yeah, it, it looks in fantastic condition, doesn't it? And then look, it's really, really cutting out. Great drive there. I think the low tackle by Ryan Jones. There they go, the drive is on. That's the first drive. There's Hibbard. Just waiting for a moment. And then taken well at the back by Jones and a good drive on as well by Phillips and Wales in very good position now. 15 metres out from that French line trying to secure that ball. Yeah, no scrum half there, so they had to pick and drive again. Great drive. Mike Phillips, oh, no, knock on, in a great position. Well, that's a bright start by Wales, no doubt about that. And there it is. Billy Palata, great take by Jones in the line out. Back of the line out, gives him an option, great run, straight through two forwards. That's where they needed the quick ball. They had to pick and drive because Mike Phillips on the floor, but there, poor placement on the floor there, just. Gives the opportunity away. That would have been a great position for Wales to attack from. First grand prize of support from the crowd, and Fickemol picking up at the back, and Machino, the scrum half, sees a little bit of space, and a good fleeting kick from the scrum half. That's a good scrum from France. Easy kick for the scrum half. Machino, no pressure on him whatsoever, and a very good clearing kick just watch they turn the Welsh scrum get heads up on the right hand side pick them as picks an easy easy clearing kick for the scrum half the a bit squint these little mistakes stopping the momentum for the Welsh the little knock on the not straight. And this will be the first opportunity 
for the French. Let's see what they do. I'm sure Barcelona will have a charge at the Welsh midfield. We'll do it again. Okay, I know it's Yeah, okay. look at the moment, Rob Hurley. Yeah, this international rugby is all about winning. Well, early engage there from France. You can see it, and Mike oh. Phillips takes the free kick, and away he goes in support from Ryan Jones. Palatau. Beyond Evans and to bigger and the Davis coming in. <laughs> Pump there as two big men meet. Yep. Deep then to bigger drop goal attempt. It's uh, not going to make it and Uge waits at fullback for France. Danger on you. Tries to go through the middle, Johan Uge. Just a bit of electricity around the ground there as Uge got the ball. Dussotoir. I don't think he's expecting a pass to Toir. He was very far behind the game line. That's a great tackle and a turnover. Oh, Wales at the moment staying in the French half. They have the scrum. The Bayon scrum half is at a busy opening. Here we are. Coombs with a very, very good tackle. Holds him up, wraps yeah. him up. His forwards come in. They'd be happy with that. 46% played in the 22. They would have liked to get a few points on the board from the pressure in the first seven minutes. Possession 50 50, but most of it in the French 22, Andrew. Absolutely. And, uh, that scrum goes down. Rare old Don't tussle in front rows. France with great uh, reserves as well in that department in Duke Alcon and Vincent de Batty. Peekable is down there, but a uh, little knock on by the French, so it's going to be Welsh ball. Oh, very, very lucky there, Wales. Good drive, and you never, very rarely do you see a, a scrum go against the head, but this man Peekable's just knocked it on. This pitch is looking badly scarred already. It is, yes. Free kick Wales. And finally, we get playing uh, rugby again, and away they come bigger and uh, looking for Roberts. A little knock on there, and uh, we'll be scrumming again. That's poor from you know, I don't know. Who's to blame? Have a look at this. But you have to, you know, get your communication right. He goes in. It's, you know, that's poor execution. They'll be unhappy with that. And as ever, every time Adam Jones goes down injured, the Paul of Wales holds his breath. Yes, the the reserves are a little bit more limited. Uh, Martin Williams watching in the the studio. What do you make of the opening nine minutes? Yeah, they've started really well in finish. You know, it's all the balls been in the French half, um, all the all the play. Sorry, um, it's just the little errors, little knock-ons, little knock-straights in the line-out, um, miscommunication between Dan and Jamie there. So, 
You know, the French as well, they look a bit di di dis disorganised again, so it's um, need, to, need to get some points, so it's no good having all this territory without any points. Well, absolutely. Adam Jones to the general relief is, uh, is fine, and back in the front row for the scrum. This one wheels round, but uh, Tika Mall is off and running again. That's good tackle by Mike Phillips. Penalty to France this time, not releasing the tackled man, and yeah. uh, France with a chance to clear here. I, th I think they, they felt he was still on his feet, and that's why they didn't release him, but Josh Clancy did shout on a couple of occasions whether they could hear him or not. <laughs> the groan, yes. <laughs> Michelin's kick is OK, it's <laughs> fine, it's no touch now. <laughs> Everyone here is on Michelac watch in the crowd at home as well. With Targa, we've shown him uh, what he did and didn't do last week. Picamol, you know, is going to be such a huge ball carrier for the French. And secure the line out through just this Suta. Punched away. Oh, and Dusotar with the spill. A chance to go left here. Yeah. We've got numbers. Now it goes now. Jonathan Davis, little chip through as he takes the big thump coming in from Bastero. Yeah, he had a couple of big tackles, Bastero, hasn't he? He's lining the, the Welsh men up. There we are. There was the opportunity from the turnover, just held up a little bit. Here's the tackle. Well, not much use of the arms there. <laughs> Zazeski then. To the back and Pickamol slaps it down. The crash ball coming through. A brawl off the ball as well. Involving Maestri and uh, Ryan Jones, but France on the attack. There's a good draw goal. Maestri is in there as well, and France with the best field position they've had in this match. Michelac met by Hibbard. Have to keep their discipline now, Wales. There's a draw goal again. Drogo was a big ball carry for the French. The Wales have done well to slow this down. Well, front of the scrum, but again, that's a rather stodgy play and a good defensive work by Wales. Yeah, it is. It's just you know Bash was going to come down the, the 10 channel. Just got to close close him down as quickly as they can. But it's very strappy at the moment. No real pattern. No opportunities created on either side. I think they slung the ball down very, very well. Sean Edwards and Rob Hurley. Mark Jones on the right as well, backs coach, former winger. I think they'll be happy with the start so far, but as, you know, as we've said, with the possession and the territory that they've had here, they wanted a few points. Well, they may get them now. Penalty from the strong Wales. Guilty, it seems of uh, pulling it down, and it'll be a pop at goal for Michelac. Yeah, that's a slight worry for the Welsh at the moment. The French scrum, you know, in a scrappy start, has looked quite dominant. They haven't been in an attacking position to take advantage of it until this uh, opportunity, but, you know, anything near the, the Welsh try line, that looks very, very powerful, the French, French scrum. Yeah, I think Adam Jones drops to the floor. Now we talk about Freddie Michelak uh, not playing standoff at uh, Toulon, of course, because Johnny Wilkinson's there. He plays from half. Of course, he's not kicking there because of Wilkinson exactly, either. So yeah. Ideal preparation, but a very good kicker. Very short run up. Look at him, just two steps. 
Mesny gets the power. Big kick for Michelin at this, confidence wise. Well, he has the power and the direction, and uh, France, despite being on the back foot in their own half, in their own 22 for much of the opening 15 minutes, have the first points up there. Yeah, first scoring opportunity. And there's the, uh, the shot for Gardening World. That is ugly. So Michelak with the first penalty of the game. And uh, his half-back partner, Mashino, fields the restart. He's got a good boot from hand as well, half-penny waiting. Gives it into Dan Digger. Little stepping away from Michelak and Zarzewski. Yeah, I'd like to see Otoraz doing a little bit more of that. Thinking the kick, bringing him on to you, and then having a dart. Here's Cuthbert. And uh, Wales with the penalty, right on the halfway line. Uh, Lee Halfman, he's got a good boot on him. Yeah, I think he will have a crack from here. Let's see if he's walking across. No, bigger goes a touch. That is within half of his range, just about. Although it's a, a, a cold evening. Yeah, it's very cold. It does make a difference. And Dan Bigger has found a beautiful touch. That, like, that's a fantastic that kick. That is a great kick by Dan Bigger. I thought by the reaction of the French winger that he might have kicked it dead but that is a superb kick now then can the wedge capitalize on that kick they have every chance look at the position they have courtesy of that man's kick Hibbert finds his man and Evans and uh, Wales will try and get a drive but a good Defensive shot from France. Look at the power of the blue shirted forwards. Still in control, though. They're still in control. A great counter drive by France, but they're still in control. Okay, use it now, says George Clancy, and Adam Jones just feeds it on. And in comes Jamie Roberts. There's another meeting of Roberts and uh, Bastereau, and the earth shudders. Still, they have it, and still a chance to carry it on through bigger. I think he's offside, so now. Yes, advantage Wales, but up to within two, three metres. The ball may have been stolen, but uh, they'll come back for that penalty. Not the try they were looking for, but may well be three points. And a talking to coming up. Back you go. Yes. Well, take the three points. That's what they will okay. do. You having a kick? Conference from that passage of play as well. Yeah, all started from a fantastic kick by this this man, Dan Bigger. Initially, a very, very good drive uh, from to improve the, discipline, okay? Make sure the French, but Wales well, keeping hold of the ball. That's a very good drive. There's the break. Was it a, a penalty for a high shot? I'm not sure. But you weren't rolling away in the tackle anyway, so this should be a very easy three points for half penny. I think he has the distance for this one. Three all in the stud defence, almost 20 minutes gone. And nothing between the two sides, but certainly Wales have had most of the play. Say again? Yeah, definitely. The one big worry is that scrum, though. Say whales on her forehead. <laughs> okay, <my turn. laughs> Again, the kicking. It's been a very high quality, by the way. Another great clearing kick by Mike Phillips. Play again back in the French half. But as I said, it's a very scrappy game. No one really creating opportunities the ball has been slowed down very effectively by both both sets of forwards no real attacking opportunity Zanzewski looks for and finds Maestri then Maschino very well placed kick and a great take by Benjamin great foul take. and suddenly France are pouring on the noise of the crowd picks up 
And forward they come, Michelak, little he is. slip to Bastero, takes some stopping, but uh, two red shirts met him there. Yeah, the two big ball carriers, Pickamores and Bastero. And on goes Dusotoir now, and then Nicolas Mas. There is uh, Jose Suta. Again, slow ball, not much on. Michelak out to Memoz and on to Johan Uge and the fullback is skipping his way into the Welsh 22. Zalzewski feeds it to Mashino back in to Picamo. Great turn of pace by the French fullback. Bastero has to check and then set off again and he's powering his way forward, eventually taken down by Coombs. Still they come, Michelak. Great ball. Machino stays on his feet, gets it to Dusotois, to Yuan Uge. Yuan oh! Uge, great covering tackle by Halfpenny. Had to give it. Still with France though. And closer they come, Machino scoops it behind Michelak. And Welsh jerseys pour in to try and secure it. I think they turned the ball over. Well, it was a two on one for a moment for France, but they lost the ball and lost their chance in Halfpenny. Hoofs it long. It's a great kick And a again. wonderful kick by Lee Halfpenny. And all the way back they come into the French half. Well, that all came about by a great turn of pace by Uge. Just skinned his, num his opposite number. And this was it. Michelac inside ball. Good run. And then it just gets a little bit strong. There's the two-on-one. He had to give it. Fafano's on the outside, a two-on-one, give it and support on the inside. Great tackle by Halfpenny, but that was the missed opportunity. Pick them all. No, it's not pick them all, sorry. Are you on Maestri? Yeah, you're on Maestri. Right, there's the acceleration. He spots Toby Falatau on the outside, just pins his ears back and goes. Look at now in their own half with the ball, Michelak. Sends it high. Great and take taken again. by Fall. Once more, the winger is under the high ball. It's twice he's taken it. He's like once more, this time the lower approach. Oh, just. And half penny. Oh, oh and he's picked charged down by Yuan Uji. Who gets to it first? It's Cuthbert getting there, spills it. France. Looking to get their hands on this ball. I it's thought it was a knock on there by Cuthbert. Oh, but he's got to go. There's numbers left. If he goes wide, you can't believe it hasn't gone le left. Still short, the numbers on the right hand side. They've slowed it down now. Zalzewski now, the hooker, dips his main and takes on the tackle. And again, the noise levels increase inside the Stade de France. The tackle coming in on the Maestri. Just slows for a moment, Michelak. Trying to hold him again. It's a choke tackle, that's what they call it. Ryan Jones doing a great job. Just trying to hold the man up. That's so brilliant. They, they have got the ball, Wills. That is brilliant work by Ryan Jones, I tell you. They turn over ball, they were really under the cosh. This is a, a former winger reacting to a 2 and one not being uh, completed. No. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait. Oh. And uh, find Lajiske alongside of a great winger <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a dog in the back of the car, isn't he? Nodding away there. Oh, dear. We'll leave the windows look open at for him. The two of them, look. <laughs> two great wingers. They had a chance of a few overlaps. And <laughs> there was no general at standoff to, to orchestrate it. They had so many numbers on the left-hand side, but the ball went to one of the forwards, Udrago, I think it was, and he just took it up. And then a great tackle by Ryan Jordan and turns the ball over. Right, not missed anything, we're just having a break for some treatment. I think Gethin Jenkins was receiving some. That's a great attack by France, a great defence by Wales as well. Tipperick being strapped up. 
Incidentally, he himself calls himself Tiporic for the purists. He is of Croatian descent, Croatian grandfather, but uh, everyone calls him Tiporic, so he's happy with that. Much debate, of course, before this match about whether he'll be wearing the seven shirt anyway. Warburton perhaps going across to, to six, but then uh, it all became redundant with uh, Warburton's stinger injury. What do you think might have happened? Yeah, I think that uh, they might have put uh, Sam onto the, the blind side. Maybe used the option of Ryan Jones on the bench, but, you know, Ryan Jones has made an impact so far. He's having a big season. A lot of the Ospreys boys are going well. Great scrum. Well, that is heartening for Wales. I just can't work the scrum out. You know, they looked... The French looked as if they were dominant, and then a great, great scrum. Sometimes you only feel as if... They just switch off, maybe, you know, and lose concentration. A bigger. Mm, a very, very good touch finder as well. It makes such a difference. Okay. Now, two great games, well, one great game already so far. It's an entirely neutral point of view, and uh, this one started very well. And tomorrow, of course, Ireland against England. Yeah. 2.25, we're on air on BBC One and BBC One HD from the Aviva Stadium, Lansdowne Road, what a match that promises to be. It's been so tough to, you know, to predict the results. Off it goes from Mike Phillips. Chance, great play, Tiprick. Looking to move it, Falatau. Now it goes wider, Jamie Roberts. There is Tipperick. Good feet. Oh, no. Hibbard. There is Coombs. Yeah. Second row takes it in and a decent ball for Wales to play with. Good tackle. It's a two -hour. good tackle there. And George North and this Ryan Jones being shunted backwards by Uadrogo and, uh, and Associates. Yeah, I think they just got under him there. So Wales with the ball, but they're heading back to the French 10-metre line. A bit of space perhaps appearing out wide. George North, a half a stumble. Is bigger. Saw that Cuthbert had plenty of defenders in front of him. Oh. Tipperick. Well, the French defence, very aggressive at the moment. They've been forcing Wales back. They're not getting over that gain line. Uh, Coombs, it looks like he might have just spilled it there. The French player certainly thought so, but Wales still with it, and up it goes from bigger. Perhaps a little bit too long, taken yeah. in by Johan Uge. He calls for the mark, and he will get a chance to clear. And the French should be happy with that, because you know, they re the Welsh recycled ball, but they didn't go anywhere, and the kick a little bit too far. So they'll be happy that they forced Wales into the kick because they didn't get over that gain line, didn't get front foot ball. Susie's kick is a sad one. And so Wales get a, a chance to come again. Lee Halfpenny to Dan Bigger. And how well directed is this kick? Will it bounce kindly? No, no unlucky. Just put a bit of spin on it, spun the wrong way. Very good option, it's very unfortunate on the bounce. So they'll come back for the 22. Again, much of the play seems to be in the French half. And again, you have to convert it into points, still nothing between the sides. Michelin goes for length at the restart, it's an ugly one. No, he's not kicking well with a hand. So Bigger sends it high. This one rather better place. Roberts underneath it takes it well. Jamie Roberts and the Wales on the front foot again. No full back. The Wales have the ball to exploit that. Here's Hibbard. So much ball to play with. Tiprick. Phillips gives it to his forwards and Coombs again and uh, alongside him Ryan Jones but then that uh, yeah his body angle's wrong again he's been 
running high and he's, they've got under him on two occasions. Carry now by Ian Evans. The Osprey's second row takes it in and uh, Wales still with that ball. And uh, running through the phases, not making too much headway at the moment, but will the gaps appear? Little chip through rubber from Dan Bigger. And a uh, good. good option in the end because all Uge can do is bobble it into touch. Yes, good option. Kept the ball in play. Made the French fullback play it, and now they'll have the throw in. Lovely kick, good defensive line again. Good chase, no option. Chance for Wales. Well, they've been here before, five, six metres out. Down in this corner, line out. Five, stay until the ball is thrown. Stay until the ball is thrown. Well, it goes Tipperick. Soros to take it. And once more Wales that's a good position get the momentum going and they have a little bit of it he's in there now isn't he he's held it up they've got to use it now referee's called oh stolen pick the has got it oh great defensive work by France and uh, perhaps a little chance Benjamin Fowl kicks ahead and he's chasing it down himself Halfpenny is there for Wales and has to dive at the feet of Fowl. Very brave. Turn over ball. Oh. Well, turned over before the referee could give the penalty. Now it's Fowl once again chipping oh. on. Oh. Spilled by North. Now Wales have it. Very fortunate that Jonathan Davis is there with a the left foot. Great, oh. great <laughs> clearance kick. A wonderful kick. Uge takes it quickly. Michelak is waiting for it. The game breaking up a little bit of Michelak. Thinks he sees some space, but uh, Halfpenny is there and it uh, calls for the mark. Poor option once again by Michelak. It was on to go, they had to go left. And uh, again, you have to. His kicking out the hand has been poor, Michelak. You know, his decision making has been poor so far. So Halfpenny takes them back just inside the French half. Interesting passage of play. It was, there's a turnover. Benjamin Fall comes away with it. George North tries to mark it, takes off the ball. Jonathan Davis, very handy being a left footer there. Great yeah. clearing kick. How many? Come closer. Forward. Forward. Pick him all. Not looking his best, a great player though. And he secured the turnover and there is the ball for France. And uh, here they come, they're getting some forward movement now. Nicolas Mas. Yeah, I think it's a penalty for France. Within Michelac's range. Looking to make more of it though through Zarzewski. Oof. Just a dip of the shoulder from Picamol and Falatau. Just about got in the way. Michelac sends it up, a hopeful one, knowing the advantage is still there. And uh, George Clancy doesn't even wait to see how that one turns out. I think France might have been in front of the kickers. We'll come back for the French penalty. Perhaps tomorrow. This will be an interesting uh, decision. See if Michelac goes for this. Yeah, just about on the threshold of his limits. Let's have a look and see what he does. Drive by the French forward. No, nope. he's not going for goal. Just too far for him. And decent enough kick takes play just inside the Wales 22. And he's been all around the world playing rugby, usually at 10, like Freddie Mitchell, but he's never quite convinced he is the epitome, I suppose, of Mercurial. I think he's, he's a good footballer, but I don't think he's a you know a good standoff. I'm afraid. I think he, he is a scrum off. France have the take at the line out, but Wales not competing, waiting for the defensive push. There is Zarzewski again, just holding it at the back, and here comes France once more. Good position now. They're very in a good position. Good drive. Good body angles. Ball at the back, he's controlling it. 
Tresky, they've got to use it. Broken up, Leon. Broken up, but uh, Zarzewski still with it. He was at the heart of that. Coombs did well there again. The ground they've made, though, up to within 10 metres of the Welsh line. Goal. Penalty Great to work. Wales, holding on to the ball, France in the tackle. It's and met by the boos of the Stade de France. Just watch the work of Gethin Jenkins here. Great work by Gethin Jenkins. Stays on his feet, gets his hands on the ball. Pick and Moss is isolated for that again. split second. So Dan Bigger to clear again for Wales. Not a bad one off the right foot, not much of an angle there. Well, still just three points apiece. Only six minutes or so remaining in this first half, but it's been an intriguing first half. And Wales have certainly given as good, if not better, than they've got. The last side to lose on the first weekend of the RBS Six Nations and then go on to win the title was France back in 2006. And both these sides still entertaining that prospect. Much debate in France, of course, about club against country and uh, the yeah. demands of the clubs and how the, the French players are a little bit fatigued by the time they come and play for France. Yeah. I think somebody's getting uh, stitched yeah. up or I've been pretty good for the last 30 minutes on. cleaned up. There he is. Right. And the bulk oh, of the side here, I was thinking the bulk of the French side is made up by Toulon to lose, and they're going yeah. to be knocking lumps out of each other in the in the week between the matches against Ireland and England. So it's not uh, not easy for France and for Philippe Saint Andre. No. Didn't say that with much sympathy. Welsh line out, ready to go again. Both the lineouts are working well. That one taken down by Evans for Wales. Yeah, not great attacking ball, you know. It's a little bit too far, that. Foul, comfortable under the, the from high ball kick. again. Directly from the kick of Mark Paul. It's a good tackle, though. Tipperick is there. Good aggressive defence again by Wales, again, trying to hold up. French man on the ball and uh, Michelac just a little poke off the outside of the boot and uh, Bastero trying to get a hand on it. Good play, good play again, Coombs. He really cleaned that up. Cuthbert uses his strength. There's a bit of space out here for Wales as they can move it. Jonathan Davis. Pass deep to Jamie Roberts and the, the covering defence gets across for Wales, for France. There's Jenkins. They have to go wide now. There's a prop forward in the outside centre position. You've got to attack him. And Benjamin Fowles just getting back to his feet for France as well, so he's they're struggling in defence. Yeah, Hibbert. Still there. And now they go to that side. Falatao. There's Evans. Hibbert. Wales conjured here. Jimmy Roberts on the inside ball nearly works well. Good inside ball. George North, that's what you want. Pick a lazy runner, pick a forward out. So into the 22 they come. Falato rolling on. They've got to go right now. They've got to go. But left again they come. Tipperick goes into play scrum half and Falato. Four minutes to go in this first half. Nothing between the sides. Wales desperately seeking the first try. Ryan Jones, the captain. There is Dan Bigger out to Jonathan Davis. A nuisance of himself, hasn't he? Fall on the wing. He's all you know. He's been there taking the high balls. Made himself a nuisance. Just slows down for a moment again for it's Wales. Gethin Jenkins. There's no full back in the line now. No full back. Marshall. 
Well, the option was almost deep in the pocket for Bigger to have got the drop goal, but he dummies and goes himself as the... Yeah, good option there. He wasn't on for the drop goal. And the Wales are keeping hold of the ball well. Andrew Coombs. Well, he wasn't behind the back. He was offside, Pickham Walls. Wasn't, it wasn't behind the last foot. Marshall under pressure gets that kick away, but uh, Wales with that ball once Chance again. no full back. Halfpenny is downed. It's a big... And uh, Dan Bigger eventually has he judged it well. No out on the full back they come, and uh, all to no avail for no. Wales. You felt there was much better available for them there. They have to keep, you know, the ball. They've done it well. Be patient. They had the opportunity. Sometimes you've got to watch because Uge gets involved a lot, and he's caught in a couple of the rocks. He chases the kicks. What you've got to do is then, there's a big in goal area to communicate with the, with the outside backs and put a grubber in, and then for, no, they'll, they'll hold the defensive uh, line speed a little bit. They have to be aware of these. Well, it's really turned around in terms of possession, Wales with more, and they've still got all that territory as well, but still just three points apiece. Blood replacement, Paul James is on. There he is for uh, Gethin Jenkins, who's going to get stitched up. It is just a blood replacement. Two minutes to go in this first half. Big two minutes now for both sides, you know. High from Mashino again, good take. Because neither side will want to give up any points just before the break. Back to Bigger. And the Ospreys man sends it down towards Benjamin Fall again. Chase is needed, good chase. Is Yuan Uge. He sends up a groan from the crowd. He's chasing this down himself, but well enough taken by Cuthbert. There's no doubt about it. This game is here for Wales to, to win today. Half penny. Oof, on good touch. Oh, Bastero. Why are, they, why are they running at Bastero? You know, he's only there to smash him over. It's not the wisest thing to do. Jack on the outside of him. Penalty to Wales. They will have the right the last possession in this first half. Yeah, good, good kick now. Field position. Just, just come away with some points. Great opportunity now. So, too many penalties. There he is. Too many penalties. Clancy says. Out. Yeah. Yeah. What's the time? What's the time, Julio? Referee George Clancy just yes. asking how much time is left, and uh, because Dan Bigger was asking if they get time for the line-out from this penalty. And he was told yes, it's not the finest kick, but uh, they're still going to have a final bash at something. Might get in a field position for a, a drop goal or a penalty. It is a double hit. Hmm. There we are. Both back row forwards again. Two back row forwards, pick them all. Next attack goal. Oh, then. Can they build and maybe just take a pop at a drop goal? Great take. Well, very good take with one hand. Ryan Jones at the back, and there's Tipperick, his back row partner. Hibbert, little loop round by Mike Phillips into and then. They're going to hold him up. They're going to try and hold him up. Okay. Ball still there for Wales, just. Play the attentions of Yannick Forestier, the loose head prop. So the clock is red, the last passage of play. And Wales have it. Tipperick goes to ground. Not making great yardage. Oh. Loose pass. And a bigger back inside his own half says uh, that's enough and yeah. sends it out. So it's nothing in it. Nothing on a disappointing end. You know, they had the opportunity to try. But I think they've really struggled to get over that gain line, which is, you know, they've stopped them creating opportunities. They've, they've gone through the phases, but not gone forward. They have to look at that, but because I think French defence has been dominant, also Wales, also, they'll be quite happy, you know, half time three all, everything to play for in the second half, you know, it's, there hasn't been any opportunities created. Yes, it could have been a lot better for Wales, but it's certainly not bad at all. This uh, game is theirs for the taking if they turn up and produce in the second half. And those boos from the crowd will be music to the ears as they troop off three all at half time. 
Yeah, they haven't seen enough, this French crowd, to make them believe just yet. Jamie Roberts led his side out for his 50th cap, but it was France who somehow sucked up the pressure that Wales were putting on them and went into the lead. Michelac, three points on the board. A good passage of play, though, from Wales. Led Lee Halfpenny to get the points back. Three all, then it was, with Philippe Saint-André playing every single ball, every passage of play. It's a tense old game, isn't it, being a coach? So Clive will attest to that, I'm sure. Uh, let's have a little look at the stats. Well, France, you, you'd think um, with the possession that they had and the uh, and the gain line and the and the fact that they were making more yards as well would have got more from that game. Perhaps they'll be more disappointed. Uh, early on, of course, it was played all in the, in the French 22 for Wales, but they didn't get any from, from it either. So in that sense, I guess a fairly even heart, very little in it. Yeah, there's, uh, like you say, Wales haven't really created a, you know, a golden opportunity, whereas France... They had a two-on-one and they blew it, and those kind of chances come back to bite you. So it's, uh, you know, when they look dangerous, France, when they do get a bit of momentum. Um, but at, at, fortunately, I think Wales are doing a good job at the tackle area, slowing them down, holding them up, and France are struggling to get that quick ball, which is makes them so dangerous. A totally different first half for Wales this week to last week, and I suppose Rob Howley perhaps most pleased at, at composure in times when they were under pressure. It's like a heavyweight boxing match, Gabby. It's uh, yeah, two two good teams here. I think both teams have stepped up from last weekend. I think France have been excellent. Their defence has been excellent. But I think Wales have just nudged it. I mean, the, the scoreline doesn't reflect the game, but the defence and the, de and the defensive line has been huge. But it's just interesting with France, you know, slow ball, they're not a great team. When they get this fast ball, however they get it, they get the high balls, they play at a different pace than most teams. But I think the Welsh defence has been just outstanding. And I think we've got just a, a great second half to come now. And talking of heavyweights, uh, Bastara, who of course is one of the changes Philippe Saint Andre has made to this lineup, uh, has made his presence no, felt. A few uh, times, got him, hasn't he? got him, not out there. <laughs> Some of the contacts he's doing, you know, he's 17, 17 and a half stone. And what's disappointing me a little bit, like I think Jonathan said in, in commentary, they are they're going at him, you know, they're running at him. Whether it's, it's just to try and make him tackle, wear him out for the second half. But he really is a physical man, and you know I think the whole both defences have really been on top. You know they've gone for the choke tackle, which is has been the trend really in the Six Nations, and um, it's difficult to get a quick ball from that. So you know highlight him here. He really does. You know whether he's got the ball or whether he's defending, he's so difficult to stop. He's he's 17 stone, like you say, but he's about four inches shorter than Jamie, so he's so compact, low centre of gravity, mm. very difficult to get to the floor. So this is where they're dangerous when they're offloading, and Wales have done really well in stopping the offload so far. Um, that two on one there, like I said, that might come back to haunt him. I think uh, it's a great opportunity. This is just Wales. If we can stop it there, this is an opportunity to. Can we stop it there just to target Basso? If you look at him, he's, he's the outside man and he's panicking. He'll worry about his pace. He will worry about ha Lee Halfpenny, Alex Cuthbert, George North. And if it just goes behind the forwards there to Dan, there's an opportunity. You can see him with, in the distance waving his arm. A little it, bit panicky when he's. Yeah, but by the time defend. the ball gets there, you know, his inside men have come to cover his shoulder and, you know, he slows up the ball. So I think. You've got to take those opportunities when they rise. It'd be interesting to see also, G Gabby, there's, you know, in Rugby D, there's all this analysis going on, whether they can get the what's been happening into the dressing room, because the, the French defensive line is absolutely up flat. There's huge space behind it, and yet front, uh, Wales keep running and running, they're recycling, they're keeping the ball, mm -hmm. but really they're not going anywhere. If you just put the ball every now and then behind it and put a foot race on to score, it just holds them back for the next phase, even if you don't score. So can they get the right message into the Welsh team? But this, this game is clearly here for the taking now. I think Uge is good as it, oh, Uge is a full-back in broken play. He's not an out and out 15. And like you say, the ball's on the floor. We saw it there last week. They don't want to fall on it, and they don't like those little grubbers behind them. So it's definitely an option they should bring in. Some good kicking from Dan Bigger today. Um, this is him running, first yeah. of all. He's, yeah, I think he's had a great first half, Dan. You know, I think that where Wales do have a definite edge over this French team is their kicking game. With Mike at nine and Dan Bigger at ten as well. And the French kicking, I think Clive will show later with Michelac, he's not the greatest. So he's bossed the game well, he's managed the game well. He had a great kick in the touch, you know, five metres from the French line. So he's, uh, he's had a really positive start. I, th I think that was, that was early on. That was his only error, him mm. and Jamie, is running into each other. The kicking game, that takes a lot of bottle. That can get egg, egg on your face. That put him in position, that's where they got the three points for. And I think the kicking game all around Phillips, I think Phillips and Bigger have definitely shaded the French halfback to Michelag and Machineau. And um, I think he's had an awesome game. I think Bigger's been very, very good. That's the little kick that just turns him again. That's what's put him under pressure. And that's where they, they just keep turning. The, the gap, the gaps are there. And um, this was his one poor kick, which we've got to... We've got to show both sides of the game. <laughs> that was his only error, to be fair. I think he's had a really big game. He got a lot of stick last week in the Irish game. 
I think he's really fronted up today. Both yeah, Rob kept faith in him. There was talk in the week that perhaps uh, he would be dropped, Hook would come in, but he's, no, he's, he's shown he's today a, he's why, a great why, player, why you know, he James, you know, We've got the booty of James Hook as well on the bench if it does open up, but at the moment, you know, you stick with him. He's controlling the game and uh, playing really well. On the flip side, the much maligned Michelak, who uh, we looked at from last week, um, any improvement from him well, today? I, I was just going to watch this. I mean, this drives a coach mad I can promise you or your forward pack mad as well because you you just can't give the ball away in those positions to a team like Wales and it's just put them on the back foot there's silly little chips and you know we gave him a bit of a hard time in the build-up and I was really hoping he's gonna sort of uh, prove us wrong but really he hasn't you know he's not threatened the uh, the Welsh team at all in the attacking game and his kicking game has been really poor and you know bit bigger is just so far ahead of him at the moment I, I still just can't believe France haven't got a better number 10 in the whole of rugby the amazing, than this guy The amazing here. thing is they've got a guy on the bench, Chunduk, who is a Trying quality the outside half. And, you know, longer he stays on the bench, the better from Wales' point what of view. What is it? Is it a coach's obstinance in, in Saint-André? I will be right. I will prove to you why I'm picking yeah, them. It, it happens, I promise you. You're, you're picking your team and you've got the, the whole of France, all the media saying, pick Chandru, and, and you just, there's part of you saying no. But I, I think also for Hana in the middle of the field that they could play a different game. And I just think they've got to get the right players who are playing out here the position they normally play at the weekends and, and, and Michelak's the nine at the moment and I think it's showing and it's just giving that France they take a bit great of a pride lack of in this approach don't they that, that they can play their players in different well, positions it's, it's, it's interesting I've never seen this before Reason, now every time you see a French team it's got it's got you know the, the number nine nine or ten you know Michelak nine or ten para nine or ten you know it's like it's like this this guy second row or back row no that doesn't happen it doesn't happen <laughs> you know so I, I think they've got to just sort this out because I, I personally think Paris should be playing now you know, Tranduk should be at 10. The, the, the proposition, just stick to it and get it played. Well, we haven't had a try yet, uh, but of course there were 16 in the opening weekend of the RBS Six Nations, and there were plenty at Murrayfield this afternoon as Scotland uh, were victorious against Italy. The third of the four Scotland tries, Stuart Hoggs, uh, really showed why it wasn't Italy's day. For Parise, still the Scottish defence holds firm. Marcy, little shot of the ball, he's got away. Inside is Okera. He needs support, and it's intercepted by Hawk. Now, what can Hawk do from here? Hawk could go all the way from here. Has he got the Sweden? He's definitely got the pace. Stuart Hawk is clear all the way to the line. That is another sensational score from the Scottish fullback. Great interception, great speed, and it leaves the table looking like this after four completed matches. Of course, France and Wales yet to be completed, uh, but two points each for Italy, Scotland, Ireland and England. And of course, Ireland and England face each other at the Aviva. Tomorrow, coverage starts 2.25 on BBC One. Something's got to give, hasn't it, on BBC One HD. And of course, England have an unchanged lineup tomorrow, which was good news for Billy Twelvetrees. Let's hear from him. Billy is a boy for me. mentioned as a possible Lions contender this week. Does that suddenly seem possible, Billy? To be honest, it's, it's a cliche, but you just got to focus on this week. Coming into this squad, I was very pleased to be named in the England squad and to get my opportunity last week to play against Scotland for my first game was one thing, and then to get another opportunity this week, I'll be stupid to look ahead. The, the whole hype around who was going to be where didn't really affect us in the squad. We all know what's best for the team and what we want to do to get better and better. I think I just wanted to get my head down, train hard and you know obviously what happened against Scotland is done and dusted now and all I can do is focus on you know training and what the coach's feedback was so from that side of it I was quite confident in what I'd done and looking forward to it if I got another chance. Well much talk this week and a lot of it from you that you'd have gone with Tuolangi um, instead of 12 trees, is he lucky to keep his place? No, I didn't say that. I, I said I'd definitely go with 12 trees. And I oh, would bring him to Lange, the sorry. Or Tua Lange outside him. But no, I, I, I think 12 trees was an absolute definite. I think he's the first player I've seen for a long time where you've definitely got the real passing and kicking skills that you need in modern day rugby at 12. And the pick at outside centre, I think that's a 50 50 call, and, and you go with the coach's call. You're, 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 you're making these calls from afar. He's gone with Barrett. He's gone with the team that won. Yeah, and I think it's a lot. And I just in, look, look at the interview there. I, I think the England team are coming over so well. You know, the, the modesty and the, the way they're coming across individually and collectively. So, no, we've all got our views on selection. Um, but you go with the, the coach's team. He knows he knows the inner inner workings of selection. You know, the team wanted Barrett in. He starts. 
Tulangi coming on is going to be a, a, coming off that'd be fantastic. I think England, they've got a really good def uh, mid midfield there, but let's face it, the guys are up against you know, Sexton, Darcy, Driscoll, they're probably the number one trio in the championship, so it's going to be fascinating to see how these young guys um, face up tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a great encounter. You can see it, of course, 225 on BBC One, but let's get uh, the word from the touchline. Serge Betson's with Jason Mohamed here. Gabby, there is increasing impatience here in the Stade de France crowd. Uh, Serge Betson, was that the Wales performance you were expecting after their dreadful start against Ireland last week? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was saying that uh, Wales team going to come here with a lot of intent, and they did. They, they come here with uh, passion, with control. They've got half-back who play really well with the forwards, and uh, I think that they're, 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 they're on the game. And in, in part of French team is a little bit disappointed. We didn't see the, the passion, we didn't see uh, the determination of the players until the, the kickoff uh, from the, 15, uh, the first 15 uh, minutes. We didn't see nothing. It's really inconsistent. The up and down. We didn't see the the, the, the control of the game from Michalak and, and the scrum half. We didn't see the forward dominate the opponent in the scrum, in the line out. It's a little bit unsure of, of what they're, they're, they're doing. So thank you very much indeed. Temperature plummeting here, pitch side. Gabby, expect a red hot second half. It's not much warmer up here in the studio, I can tell you. Let's join the commentary box and uh, those players lucky to have had 10 minutes inside, Andrew Cotter. Yes, indeed. And look at this man. He's out. Francois Tranduc is on, but so is Michelac. Francois Tranduc is not on his favourite fly half position. He's gone to fullback. Johan Uge has gone to the wing because I think, as I look down, Benjamin Fall is uh, off. I can't see him anywhere. Oh, straight through. Look at this. He should here we go, Mike. Phillips, <laughs> straight into Michelac, left, great start, great break by Mike. Here's Gethin Jenkins back uh, on after his uh, blood replacement, back on for James. What a restart that was by Wales, immediately getting France on the back foot. Bigger, and sends up the... Towering kick, Tipperick chasing this one down. Tranduk takes it well, first touch. Just a little bit too far by Bigger there. Shoveled out by Forestier and uh, Zarzewski. Tackling Evans. And Wales have the penalty, and just outside the 22, right in front of the posts. Well, very sloppy by France. Just a single runner. And then he just seals off. That's what I think he's done. Maestri just goes in, seals him off. Just watch. Great tackle, Ian Evans. There he is, off his feet, Maestri. There's the penalty. No need to give that. Three French players there. Great start for Wales in the second half. Great break by Mike Phillips. As I mentioned, there it is, the kick for... Lee Halfpenny. I'm trying to find out what's happened to Benjamin Fall, the winger. He played quite well in the first yeah, half, but obviously he tweaked was, something. He was limping towards the end. I think he got caught in the bottom of a ruck. The Rabu starts mm. around the Stade de France again. Halfpenny readies himself to give Wills the lead. Through it goes, and Wales, three points in front, two minutes gone in the second half. Great start to the second half for Wales. Yeah, lovely break by Mike Phillips, set the field position up, spotted, I think it was uh, Nicola Maas, I think it was the prop forward there, just a little bit slower than the rest. Created the gap for Mike Phillips, a sprint through. Michelak with the restart, and Toby Falatau gathers in straight into Dusseltoir and does well to keep going. Just confirmation of the replacement. Tranduk is on at fullback oh, for no. France. Mistake, carried, carried back in. Which means he cannot kick straight for touch. Out of went to the full, so back they come. France line out. And it's going to be inside the Wales 22. That's where Alan Rollo is. He's on the touch. Every time it's getting Jenkins back on for Paul James after yeah, his blood replacement. I think uh, Mike Phillips is starting to uh, wind up. Pick the on my street. 
just getting under their skin a little bit. Rozewski. And here comes France and uh, Machino just bounces his way through bigger. A little energy about France coming forward now to within five metres, driving on. Machino beyond Kikamil to Dusotoir. Jonathan Davis is calling out wide. Get the defences organised. Oh. Deep in goals, drop goal attempt from Francois Tranduc. And well, it is wide by Tranduc. Well, first of all, that is the wrong option. Such a negative option to take. They had Wales on the back foot. They had numbers on the right-hand side. Look, they're all in there. Bigger. Jamie Robbs has got to come in. There is no defence on the left-hand side. And then, wrong decision and a poor, poor kick. And very welcome from uh, Wales' point of view to see that. Just signs that uh, France are not quite themselves. Certainly not the France who trounced Australia. Beginning to doubt themselves, perhaps. Yeah, I, th I think Clive made a point... Uh, you know, at half time, that they're not great when the ball is uh, is slow. And that's all Wales have got to do is slow it all down all the time. Gary Owen from uh, Michelin, half penny coming forward and leaps and takes it in beautifully. Reminder of the lineups. It's up. Jordan Davis kicks long. Michelin is back there. Taken in by Palatone, half penny again. A bit of tennis at the moment, and Tranduk just feeds it on. Ooh, a bit of confusion again there in the and so French ranks. Nice. Great tackle again. Ian Evans has put some big, big tackles in. Really put himself about Ian Evans. Nicola Mas into Tipperick. Machino pops it over the top. Bigger coming forward. Here's a knock on that France have it into touch goes national, but uh, France will have the scrum and uh, it would go down injured. Yes. Not sure what happened. And George Clancy says, Are you okay? It doesn't look okay, George, to be honest. I felt better. Right. See what happens to him. His shoulder, perhaps. What makes you say that? Because he's holding his shoulder. Oh, you he's think? holding his shoulder, saying, <laughs> "Oh, my shoulder hurts." I went down on it. <laughs> Again, I think well, Coombs. Coombs. I think, I think you're right, Dan. That, that is a yeah. shoulder injury. Yeah, he's saying it's my shoulder. <laughs> Definitely my shoulder. <laughs> I think it's a shoulder. Yeah. We'll get confirmation of that later. We'll get someone down there to ask him. <laughs> So, scrum to France after that uh, shoulder injury for uh, Drogo. Just get a bit closer. Yes, they're in on no shift. I'm sure the belief is really starting to come into the Welsh players, though. There's nothing so far to unduly worry them from no. the French side. As we all know, a French side can spring to life. The scrums have been messy today. Yeah, very messy. Some of that might be due to the, the, the pitch, as you can see, they're cutting up again. Huge. It's just dreadful, look at it. Move it out. Let's go to Clive Woodward up in the studio. Well, it's just uh, in interesting in terms of the importance of these substitutes, because France have named uh, Tranduk and Fritz on the bench, which is basically a fly half and a centre. And, of course, what happened, Fall, Fall's gone off, so you've got Tranduk going to fullback, and you, you've lost your pace because you've got another 10 playing fullback and uh, it just leaves you exposed so you know to me you've always been to have a gas man on your bench who can generally cover both uh, wings and fullback which France clearly haven't that's a good point as uh, Piccolo picks and goes again and there is a uh, Johan Maestri to lose second row they're very deep again if they, get this, they just want to get over the game line they've got to play a little bit flatter but look how deep uh, Michelin is there is Suta. It's just beginning to edge forward a little bit. Suta going sideways there, though. And here's Michelak. Flings it deep. 
and uh, Fofana tries to make some ground. Yeah, good break by Fofana, great tackle of Falatau. Here's Uge now operating on the wing and feeds it infield. Zarzewski. Suta down tying his lace at the moment. France down to 14. Michalak and Bastero, but a, a bit of a stance that would then gets himself going and slips away from Hebar, then <laughs> straight forward and over one or two more. Zarzewski again. Yeah, he can't uh, leave him ahead of speed up. Here's Forestier. Keep the discipline now, Wales. It's been a hallmark of their game so far. When they've had to, they have defended well. Both sides have really defended with a, you know, with and with a lot of discipline. Lele blue around the stand of course, haven't held it for a while in this match, taken on now by Johan Maestri once more. I think the two sec Welsh seconds have made a lot of tackles. A turnover. And Adam Jones has it. And uh, we'll come back for the Welsh scrum. So again, good defence, pays dividends. Wesley Fofana. I've talked about him playing on the on the wing today, but so dangerous in the centre. And uh, Bastero is a pretty dangerous himself. He is. Well, just three points in it on the scoreboard with that uh, penalty from Lee Halfpenny at the start of the second yeah, half. Yeah. There are all the stats for you, pretty even as well. Yeah, hardly anything in it, is it? Hardly anything in it. The missed tackles, you know, they want to they wanna keep down. Meters made, carries, tackles yeah, made. At the moment there, Johan Uge is on with Alan Rowland doing some gardening, pressing down the... Is it But look at this, I mean, it's just it's, uh, horrible for scrums. It's, just makes it so difficult to, to, to get a scrum completed. Plant some potatoes in there. Be patient, be patient. Touch! Touch! And Delilah seems to be winning the battle of song at the moment in the stand of France and uh, big scrum, big scrum. Do it again, Welsh ball, but uh, applause from the Welsh forwards to one another. They had a, a couple of early shocks in the scrum in the first half, but seemed to have steadied things. I think uh, Uderago is struggling as well with his shoulder, so... Well, it's a Benjamin Kayser, former uh, Leicester hooker, now with Clermont Auvergne. He's going to come on, and Vincent Debati, the uh, Belgian prop who plays for Clermont Auvergne as well, he's going to come on. And they're coming on for Forestier and Lucid and uh, Dimitri Zarzewski, the hooker. Remember, long set, okay? It's your responsibility as well. Let's go. Long set. Go. Has to go down the middle. Get your steady scrum, then down the middle. To the shower. Shampoo is set. Good game, Zarzewski, actually. He's been pretty busy in the loose. Yeah, he's carried the ball well. Touch! Set! Well, down they go again, oh, free kick this time shot. to France. Attacking opportunity now for France, and they will take the scrum. I'm going to do the scrum again. Let's go to Clive Woodward again. Uh, it's just interesting the two, the two subs coming in. Look at the clock, everyone watching at home. It's on exactly 10 minutes. So this is Priel Dane. They're bringing on the hooker. They're bringing on uh, Debati, the prop. And it, it, it sort of sums up the, the French... Sort of, you know, kind of style at the moment. It's, it's very sort of preordained. They just at their best when the whole game's broken up and they really play at pace. And almost the substitution's been so preordained as it is. It's, it's just not to me the way the French team plays at its best. Absolutely. I think this one here that we're seeing now is, uh, is injury ordained because uh, Oudro goes off and Damien Schuly, the Clermont Auvergne. Uh, well, he's a number eight usually, but he's coming on in the back row, so he'll pack down on the flank down we go again this one ends in a penalty for France well and that's what they that's the, what they wanted they had the free kick 
took the scrum option. Now will hopefully take the three kicks. Three points. Well, they are now playing on a, a ploughed field, but it'll be a, a proper goal for Michalak. Quarter given in the scrum from either side, but uh, Michelag will have a chance to draw France level here. again from Michelin, the much maligned fly half, but France are level at six points apiece, and this game from the start all the way through the first half, and now in the second half, there is so little between these two sides, and nothing at all between them on the scoreboard. No. Well, the, the uh, greenkeepers are off, the uh, ground on, are on. Look. Yeah. <laughs> the Wales at the moment have got about 20 players on their side of the pitch. Well, they better get off, I tell you. You can leave a rake lying on there to be stood on in comic fashion. Oh, yeah, off it yeah. goes from uh, Machinot. And it's losing a chance now for Wales. Keep it in play. Coombs is out. Yeah. As, you know, they are so well matched. This game could come down to, you know, territory and making, turning the pressure into points. There hasn't been a try scoring opportunity yet. Maybe the two on one very early on, but defences are so much on top. You suspect that uh, even though Wales are on that dreadful run of eight defeats at the moment, France perhaps have a little bit more to lose, to lose to Italy and then at home in the next game that the booze would ring out. So. Wales can keep in touch in this game until the final minutes. We've got a lot of pressure on France, but here come the home side. On a breakaway down the blind side and carried forward by the giant Picamol. Good tackle, Mike Phillips, though. Slow the ball down. Play on, says the referee. A few errant bodies. Right, attack, attack, outside 12. Attack, one pass. And it goes wide now to Jamie Roberts. Jonathan Davis is there, takes it in now, and Lee Halfpenny alongside him. Halfpenny steps angle. inside, and Halfpenny is still going, but then stumbles and just taken down. Mermoz was there, covering for France, still with Wales. Cuthbert. It's it goes on. to Jenkins. Ooh, blind pass. It's it going wide to Ryan Jones, and the back row of the captain, <laughs> he finds touch beautifully. End to end. You feel at the moment, I know it's basically, but they're not bossing at the moment, so nervous. They're not, you know, they're not playing to win, they're playing not to lose. And that's psychologically, that's that's very different. You can feel how nervous and tight this game is, you know. They had an opportunity to go through the hands there, and then Ryan Jones put the kick in get field position. Change made by Wales at Hooker. There is Ken Owens, the Scarlets Hooker. He's on for Richard Hibbard. Yeah, and he made uh, he made a big impact when he came on against uh, Ireland. Ken Owens carried the ball extremely well. And now France will make well, changes as well. Uh, Morgan Parra is coming on at scrum half for Machino, and uh, Luc Ducalcon is coming on in the front row for Le Bus and Nicolas Mas. There is Ducalcon. Castro prop to changes at scrum half and in the front row. Morgan Parra is a very talented player to come on. To come on. France line out deep inside the room 22. He's in there, that's been held up. I think that's Ryan Jones again. Turnover. Well, I tell you, he's had a big game. Ryan Jones has been immense in the loose. I think he's overshadowed the opposite back row. Pick them all as a big ball carry and runs well. But all the ugly stuff, Ryan Jones has been brilliant. There's a confirmation again on those replacements. 
And again, I, I just feel, you know, they had the opportunity there. They turned side on the French defenders. And when Halfpenny made the break, I just think they've got to give a little bit more width. Make Bastero defend bigger spaces. But can we have a satisfactory scrum? It's a Welsh ball. Down it goes. Oh. Penalty to France. We see it from the, the overhead shot favoured by the French director, but you never see it on the replay. Okay. Well, clearing kick's not too good. It's going to be a line out to France, just outside the 22. Clive Woodward again. Uh, again, absolutely huge call that scrum. It doesn't need me to say. You know, there's moments in matches you just look at it from a coaching point of view, you go, wow, that was a huge call from the referee to be. Interesting to see that again, but fortunately the French haven't cleared the lines too well here. They do take the line out though through Suter, and there is the new prop, Debati. He's disrobed. <laughs> Clearing kick and waiting for it is George North. So Wales with the ball back inside their own half now. And the space is there for Mike Phillips to try and exploit. Back goes Francois oh. Tranduk. Well, I didn't trouble if Adam Jones is, the, is the, the first chaser there. Good kick by Mike Phillips. There's just a run. Side steps and then uses his real strength, which is the that's, Maori step. That's what you want to see. Now half penny wheels. You need to pick up the pace a little bit, Jimmy Roberts. The man down four wheels. I think it's George North, is it? North yep. is back at his feet now and getting back into the line. Well, Michelak is defending in the outside centre now. That's the opportunity. They have a look. Go at Michelak. <laughs> oh, too well, the kick from Mike Phillips is too long and he's taken by Francois Poor, poor option that is. You can see kick, kick uh, on the other end of the pitch, Ryan Jones flapping his arms about in frustration at that one. waiting to make another change with uh, Paul James going to come on in a more permanent fashion now for Gethin Jenkins this was uh, Gethin Jenkins on Debati carrying a little bit of holiday weight super slow -mo. Line out. This is Jonathan Davis. Just a little short pass. And Dan Beggar is turned over by Bastero. And, if, and again, Michelak is injured in the outside centre position. Give the ball to Cuthbert to run at him. Still forwards though. Do their bit Coombs. bigger there's Jamie Roberts if they're gonna take the ball up there just up on it's on oh, man, half down injured at the moment for France and uh, Wales attacking there it's uh, Suta who's struggling the second row so Wales still with that ball phase after phase just prodding away into the final quarter of this match and still just two penalties apiece. Jimmy Roberts infield, ball spilled. You know, that's, they know that's a set move, that's poor execution. I'm not sure if he... He didn't time his run there, I don't think. He just overrun it a little bit. And those little, little mistakes... And he's... And there's Sutter receiving treatment. There's no doubt that uh, Wales have this game okay. there if they can just cut out a few mistakes and their first win in Paris since 2005 the treatment to Suta and to Bastero
Martin Williams up in the studio. What do you make of it so far? Great chance here for Wales. Yeah, look, it's, um, they've improved so much from last week. Defensively, they've been outstanding. You know, we mentioned Ryan Jones, uh, but I think Ian Evans, you know, Gethin right Jenkins first half in attack oh, yeah. area. It's just frustrating the French, and um, you know they just look lost at them. There's nobody bossing it for France. With his conversely, I think on the Welsh side, you know Dan, Dan and Mike Phillips, uh, you know, sort of make, taking some really good options. So, um, like I say, it's going into the last 20 minutes with it, you know, all tied. And we said this is where the French will get nervous. We just need something to go away. Well, the scrum goes down again. Again, I still feel that the, the scrum could be very, very influential. When you engage, in this game, you know, an attacking scrum for France. George Clancy seems to think that they are the dominant scrum. And as Clive said, the attacking Welsh scrum, he gave very, very quickly. A few whistles start to ring out from the crowd. It's frustrating for them to watch, but again, we, we do offer them some mitigation with the state of the pitch. That the front rows have been given a talking to. Others from France, they call for the penalty yeah. and they get it. That is now becoming a big worry for Wales. If they get an attacking position, they will go for the scrum in a tight match. Michelak's kick just over the head of North, uh, even in the penalties considered in this match as well, but perhaps not quite so even in the scrum now. the crowd on a very cold Parisian evening trying to get themselves involved in this match that's what Tran Duke that change on it uh, fullback and French ball at this line out and then they're making some headway Finds the replacement prop Ducalcon. Getting into the danger area for the Wales here, up into the 22. There's Michelac again, little pop on the outside. Fofana, good angle. Dusotois. Ducalcon again. Carried well since coming on. Ducalcon looks very similar to Bastaro, in a similar shape. One a prop, one a centre. Welsh defence equal to the task at the moment. Morgan Parra trying to squeeze his way through. Probing between the props there. There's Morgan Parra. Placement scrum half and Suta. So slow, isn't it? There. Well, and again, no one on the left hand side for France, no one whatsoever. So they know where they have to defend. There's Michelac. And they're just flitting about the the game line not making too much progress Fofana looking for work he's got to go and look for the ball Suter takes it and the ball might have been turned over no little knock on there says the referee scrum to France yeah he'll be happy with that uh, call scrum well, it's become a, an attritional kind of game now. It's, it's one of those ones that in the past, in the last decade, these two sides have served up some great entertaining rugby. There have been flashes of that today, but it's becoming a, a tense, edgy affair. Both these sides, as you were saying, with so much to, to lose, a great fear of losing and what that might mean, rather than trying to go out there and win the game. And the pitch doesn't help. Uh, how will this Welsh scrum respond? Because France just threatening to get 
the upper hand this, in this aspect yeah, of the match. This is a big scrum. This is a big scrum. He's given penalties against Wales. I think on two previous scrums, they have got to try and hold this. The crowd know the importance of this scrum as well. And to no one's surprise, down it goes. And uh, Ian Evans making it clear. Uh, but we all know that look the pitch is uh, look at horrendous. Yeah. Four blue. Four blue substitutes. Going to make a change, France. They're waiting to bring on their giant, Tao Fipanua. This guy, this guy is massive. Well, he's coming on for Suta. And Roman Tao Fipanua, that's uh, Suta going off. And there's Tao Fipanua. His, uh, his weights range in reports from... 21 stone to three and a half tons. I think he's, tw he's 22 stone, just about officially. 22. He goes into the second row. So big scrum again. And uh, down it goes again. Up goes the turf. Oh, look at the turf. Hotline to Titchmarsh. If the, if the scrum goes down, you can't blame the forwards if that you know if it goes down. Once you lose your footing, yeah, sure. you're gone. Yeah, and I'm sure you know the French players will be having a quiet word. George Clancy. Down she goes again. Penalty to Wales is the decision this time. That's not going to be met well by the crowd and uh, a little bit of frustration in there as well from the players. Binding. Well, them's been so dominant. Why would you? Why would the French prop slip a bind? I don't know. Whatever the reasoning for the decision and the decision for the penalty, a great decision is from a Welsh point of view, and a very good clearing kick as well from Dan Bigger. There we are. And then Hotline to Brian Moore. Yes. So suddenly Wales back inside the French half and their line out. 13 minutes to go, six points apiece. Line out, long one taken well at the back. Now, what can Wales do from this? Jonathan Davis. Good run, good, good hit and there. Thumped into Bastero and sent the big man spinning back. Ryan Jones carries. Been held up by Hooja, I think. Good ball. down this blind side again through yeah. Brisbane Hooker, Ken on Owens. On his own. There's Tipperick. Cut foot straight into Michelak, who went high on him but stayed strong. Falatau. Wales beginning to string things together again. This match to be decided by fine margins. Jamie Roberts. Isolated there, uh, be lucky if you're not penalised. Uh, France desperately trying to get there, but uh, Wales still have it. So slow. Balatao. Bigger and out to half penny. Tries to step around Dusatois. Ken Owens again. Air of tension hanging over this match. <laughs> yes. And a bigger, well, a kick goes horribly wrong. Uje did that go forward, went backwards, says uh, George Clancy. I just don't understand that kick by Big Guy. He's been having a good kicking game. And half. then, poor kick. And Hampery chasing down his own kick. Back it comes, all good hands, good take, and Dusatois has it, and uh, the crowd lifts again. There is Ducarcon, <laughs> but a big <laughs> knock on from <laughs> Johan Uje. Shouldn't on laugh, but uh, on the Edson, that was a flip, flip pass by uh, me 
Shalak, and now the crowd really, really got onto them now. Oh, half very. He has good hands to Jonathan Davis, and out there to Alex Cuthbert. Van Bigger hearing through there, looking yeah. for the little offload. They've had a lucky break now, Wales. They've had nearly got turned over, but have left to have the ball back. So now is a chance. Don't go throwing silly long passes. Well, Dan Bigger just running out of options there for a moment. Little poke forward from Jamie Roberts into touch. It goes. I'm not really sure about that kick. You know, they had possession. No, they were surrender possession. That was usually not uh, knocking on. So ten minutes to go in this match. There was the, the knock on from Uji. Ten minutes to go, six points apiece. Uh, earlier today, Scotland got a uh, win at uh, Murrayfield, a comprehensive win, 34 10. Of course, tomorrow, Ireland against England, 225 on air, BBC One, BBC One HD. And yep. uh, change being made. Big result for Scotland, very big result. You know, who would have thought they took the opportunities very, very well. And so now comes off, Lloyd Williams on. He will uh, he'll be sharper, Lloyd Williams. And this is it, why, you know, why did we kick? But they've got the ball back just inside the 22. This now, last 10 minutes, is all about game management. Where to play this game. Just listen to the, the swelling noise, the boos. They're getting edgy, they are uh, They are not happy in the stalls. They are not happy, and I think uh, the header from Uge started them off. Nine minutes remaining in this very, very tense match. Wales still with that ball, and George North. Yeah, if they can bring those big wingers in, and target Michelak, you know, he doesn't like the defensive part of the game. Oh, and Wales looking stronger now. Go left. Left, no. Go left. So you're urging, they do just that, and a little pop over from Bigger, and the chase there, and gather, and will he score? He does! George North is in for the try, and it may be the one which wins this match. A long way to go. They're just going to check and have a look at that, but George North has certainly scored there. Well, he knows. There were numbers on the left-hand side. They had to go early. They, were, they had numbers there, but what a great kick. The ball bounce favours George North. He thinks he scored. Great bounce for George North. You're not going to stop him foot. Oh, what a try. Oh, that is a great That is finish. a try. He keeps his left foot in play. What's the reaction of this? This is what it means. That's what it means. That is a massive, massive try George North great take keeps his foot in the field of play scores a try a oh, great finish his 12th try for Wales it will be confirmed yeah. shortly look at his left foot there here comes the TMO yes that's a great finish by George North Julio DeSantis the TMO has uh, confirmed it's a try George Clancy has confirmed it and the women supporting the Wales is happy as well Wales five points to the good conversion to come eight minutes to go Howley, oh, to be a coach. Now listen to this crowd. <laughs> oh, a very difficult conversion attempt, but that's been coming, that try, to be honest. They've had all the pressure wheels in the last ten minutes or so. Great kicker, Neil Jenkins. Clears the way for Lee Halfpenny. It's kick. the right side for a right footer. This is a big kick. To take the difference to seven points. What it a is kick. good. Great kick from Lee Halfpenny and Wales. Seven points in front. Seven minutes to go at the start of France. Now then. Michelin's restarts have been poor. He needs to hang it up there for the French. Wales need to take the restart. Concentration levers and clear it. Oh, great kick again. What a kick that is. Well, it's uh, almost boxes <laughs> Evans. 
Wasn't expecting it to come in at head height. It was Shane Bolt when they got to that, let me tell you. There's Williams replacement Strom half over the top and uh, Picamol is there. I think his foot was untouched there. It looks as if it was. Alan Rollo operating this touch here. He could have taken it on the full. If he'd have put his foot down. Big mistake. And so Wales get a chance to come again. Just hold it. Don't close it though. No, they didn't. They need the play. Or need to control the ball. Oh, and a penalty it. to Wales. And if this is kickable, if they can kick it, take it beyond seven points. This is in Lee Harfenny's range. He's coming up. The scrum cap is off. He knows this kick wins the match for Wales. And it's now the Welsh who are singing bread of heaven around the Stade de France. It's going to be a kick for Lee Halfpenny. And uh, this French side, which seemed like world beaters when they trounced Australia in November, are staring down the barrel of defeat at home against Wales to follow defeat away against Italy. And what a win this would be. A long way to go yet, six minutes, but what a kick this is for Halfpenny. This is a big kick. Five minutes to go. Three from three so far, but this by far the toughest, well, certainly in terms of distance. His last kick was a yeah. crack of that conversion. Got it. Big, it is big good. Kick. What a kick from That's Lee Halfpenny. They know how vital it is. And Lee Halfpenny's kick takes Wales 10 points clear. Five minutes to go in this match. Here we are. Get over, get over, get over. That's it. That's what it means. How can I restart again? What is he doing? <laughs> the Wales gather in that restart, have to play sensibly now, they have done throughout this match. Good chase is needed, they will, there's only one option that they can do, they have to counter. Johan Uge in the loop around from Para and on to Picamol. And the crowd give one last defiant roar and try and lift France on towards the 22, they come now, Ducalcon. Big tackle again, he's got him held up, Tipperick and... Tower in there. There is Michelac and he's passed to nobody. And uh, Jonathan Davis tries to get a boot on it. Still French ball, but back almost in the halfway line. Bastereau comes in to secure it. There's Michelac again. Oh, and uh, Michelac. A little blind pass, it might still work for France, and on comes Tranduk on the wing. Good play by Cuthbert. Four minutes to go in this match, ten oh. points the difference. Got to be knock on, that's it. Good defence, great line speed. I think Sean Ed will be very happy with the line speed. But the French have been so poor once again. Slow ball. And it here come the boos once more in the Stade de France. Well, at times it's been a, a little bit stodgy, a little bit nervous and edgy, but it doesn't matter how it's achieved. A win against France in the Stade de France is, is something to celebrate, it's and Wales are heading towards it. It's a, it's a great win, you know. They're on their way. I think they've shown great character today. Backs against the wall, great defensive effort. Both defences have been superb. One bit of magic from Dan Bigger. What spots the space, puts the chip in. Great finish, George North, and really that has been a difference. Okay, Captain, we have I think they deserve, you know, to win. They've dominated most of the territory and possession. Good they good couldn't turn the, the pressure into points until Sir, that one opportunity. Well, I wonder if France are to lose here. Uh, Philippe Saint Andre was very loyal to these players and said, uh, make amends and uh, atone for things. But I think if they lose here, there might be a night of the long knives and great changes to come. France at Twickenham in their next match. 
Wales and Rome to play Italy. And the spectators are heading off into the night, the French fans. Had enough. Well, it is just about beyond them now. Three minutes and ten points. It's not realistically going to happen. And you think about that long run, the last time Fra uh, Wales won, well, they beat the Barbarians in the summer, but the last time they, they won a full test match was France to clinch the Grand Slam last year. And they just need it is to kick-start their season. It hasn't been pretty, but on the back of a poor, res on poor results. Oh. Well, penalty to France. Yeah. Now, what do they do with this? Well, they've got to put it in the corner. A converted try is not going to be enough. They need ten points. It's a, a charge from Picamol. Michelin gets it wide to Trandu. To the outskirts of the Welsh 22, all you suspect to no avail for France, and the Welsh defence has been so strong throughout Wales, seldom go without scoring a try in their own patch, and Wales want to keep them out to the last. Thierry Dussotoir. Great tackle again, hold him up, that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Can't get away from there, I don't think. The carry from Tau, Kukanua. There's Bastero. He's one big basketball. There is a Tal Kipanu again, a little knock on, and this and might that be. That is it. That is it. Enough, it's got to be a scrum to Wales. Man of the match. Yes, well, I think the French press have picked their man of the match, and there he is. The RBS, Six Nations man of the match, picked by the French press, is Lee Halfbenny. I think it's been a massive effort, I think Ian Evans has been superb and Coombs, Ryan Jones has been immense as well. It's been a great team effort, shown a lot of character on the back of all those defeats to come here and get this result. Really what they needed. The W was more important than the performance today and they'll be very, very happy. I see Craig Mitchell is on in the front row for Adam Jones. There's Aaron Shingler who's coming on in the back row for Ryan Jones. And Ian Evans down there is off 12, as well. 12, Lou Reed 12. is Lou Reed on. And they're making another change as well. Scott Williams is going to come on. So ringing the changes, emptying the bench with just over a minute to go in this match. And... Uh, Williams is on for Jamie Roberts. Touch! Touch! Set! Well, France had a big shove in the scrum, but uh, Williams gets Turn it away it and shifted to man of the match half penny. Forward comes Tran Duke to try and keep it in, does well. Turnover by Wales to finish this match. Chance and uh, Cuthbert tries to find a way through. Just keep possession for a bit now. Out it goes. Well, too early from that. Uh, Lloyd Williams got his uh, timekeeping slightly wrong, but well, it's only going to delay things. Yeah, they're not going to score 10 points in uh, 15 seconds quite an achievement but uh, France they will finish the, the final whistle will be accompanied by 70,000 more <laughs> whistles yes there's hymns and arias in the background as well here at the Stade de France and uh, another ball goes loose and uh, Tranduk just shovels it on and Fofana nothing doing out there the clock is red this is the last passage of play and from deep, they try and attack. They are trying to salvage something from this game, but it's all for nothing for France. Dussoutoir. Yeah, they just lateral look at all. There's nothing happening. Defence has been so solid. Bastero tries to get forward. The 
tackle again. Again, some very, very good Welsh sides have failed to come here and win in the Stade de France. And this Welsh side here today, which is coming off the back of eight defeats, is going to do so. They're going nowhere, really. They're going nowhere. And summing up the match, France have the ball, but nothing doing. Still they try. Oh, what? Oh. It'll trip over. Forward it goes, that will be the end of things. Halfpenny boots it out and Wales celebrate. The whistle goes. What a win for Wales. Here come the boos inside the Stade de France for the French, but don't listen to them. Listen instead to the cheers and look at the smiles from the Welsh players because eight defeats fade into memory now. This is a famous, famous victory for Wales in the Stade de France. Yeah, great, great win on the back of, you know, some dreadful results, but what a win. I think showed a lot of character, a lot of character. You know, it wasn't the prettiest match, let me tell you, it wasn't pretty, but it was more important to get that result. The one bit of magic, the one chip, the one chase, great finish, and that really was the difference. I think they deserved it because they dominated the territory, you know, but it was just great character and a very very important win and you could see how much it meant to rob howley coming down the steps there and when he was celebrating george north try as well i'm sure the reports of the death of welsh rugby greatly exaggerated as for france a different matter full time here in the stade of france france 16 france 6 away